Hey guys, this is Spencer from Mobox Graphics, and in this tutorial, we are going to create the iOS Photos app icon. Now this artwork's originally by Apple, so credit goes to their designers, but I think there's a lot of really cool effects and uh, skills you're gonna be able to gather from this tutorial. So let's get started. We're gonna first create a new document up here in File, New, or hit Command N or Control N on a PC. We're gonna set it up to be 1920 by 1080, and that's pixels with a horizontal orientation, uh, the rest of this I have set as default color mode RGB and hit create. All right, the first thing I want to do is go ahead and give my artboard a background color. So I'm going to select the rectangle tool over here and then create a rectangle by just simply clicking up in the upper left hand corner and selecting 1920 by 1080 for the pixel size. We just want to fill this entire artboard and we want to make sure this is centered up. For instance, you might have created a little bit off center. I'll zoom out so you can see that. Uh, to center this up, have that rectangle selected. Go up here, make sure you have Align to Artboard selected, and then click both the Horizontal Align and the Vertical Align. So that centers that right up on our artboard, covers it up completely. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the stroke by clicking None, and then we're going to set this to a very specific color. How about we pick E2, E2, E2? How's that? Actually, no, let's pick D1, D1, D1. I'm gonna go just a little bit darker. I think that color is approximately, oh, I don't know, in almost the 20% black range. It's just a very light gray. And I'm gonna lock that by using Command 2 or Control 2 on a PC. And the reason I did this is so that when we create our app icon shape, which we'll go ahead and do by clicking the rectangle tool, and I'm gonna click out here and create a 570 by 570 pixel rectangle. That size is actually important and I'll explain it to you in a second. So 570 by 570 and click OK. I'm going to change the fill on this to a white. And now you know why I filled this to a gray uh, background color because I wanna be able to see the white icon shape on top of it. So the first thing uh, we need to do with this is actually create the rounded corners. And that's where the 570 comes into play here. So if I switch over to my direct selection tool, I notice that there's a live corners box up here and I can select the corner radius. I did a little research for you and Apple's uh, ratio of width and height to corner radius is 57 to 10. So we added a zero to that 57, so we're gonna add a zero to the 10 and make this 100 pixels on the corner radius. Now, some of you may not have seen that because you're in an older version of Illustrator. So what you can do, if I just undo this, what you can do is select your shape, go to Effect, Stylize, Round Corners, and you get the same uh, radius designation here. You could preview it and you see that we get the same uh, corner radius happening here. So you can click OK to apply that. I'm gonna go ahead and go back since I have the latest version and just apply the 100 pixel uh, corner radius with that corner widget up here, live corners. So now what we're gonna do is move this to the side and start to create our, I don't know if you would call it leaf shapes out here. So I'm gonna grab the rectangle tool again, click on my artboard and size this to 200 by 300. So that's like a two by three ratio on these little, uh, I don't know if you call them leaf shapes or petal shapes of the app icon. So I'm gonna round the corners of this as well. It's gonna be the same corner radius of 100. Creates like a half circle on either end of our shape here. And don't forget that if you're in an older version of Illustrator, you can use the round corners feature to create this same effect. With that selected, I'm going to go ahead and pull in some of the app icon colors. I have these saved already over here in, in the first uh, first canvas that I showed you. So I'm gonna select all these, copy them, and just paste them to the side here. Pause the video now if you want to copy all of these hex codes, but I'm not gonna spend too much time on them. I'm just gonna select the, all the swatches here and come up to my swatches panel and hit this new color group. And we're gonna call this Apple Colors. And I'm going to hit OK because it's going to create all of those swatches from the artwork I have selected. So now I have all the swatch colors that I need. I'm going to move back over here. Once again, just pause the video on those colors if you want to copy down all those hex codes. Let's create the first petal here and use the first petal color. I think it's actually this sort of orangish red 
color here. So what we're gonna do is duplicate this around, like we're duplicating it around a circle. And I actually just discovered this method by trying to recreate this icon, and I think this is honestly the best duplicate uh, like duplicating shapes around a circle method that there is out there. I think it even beats my own tutorial on how to do this. So let's go ahead and get started. What I want to do is create some space on the bottom of this petal that we're going to duplicate around. So I'm going to select the ellipse tool over here. Just click on my canvas anywhere, not on top of the shape. And I'm going to make it a five pixel by five pixel circle, just very, very small circle. I'm going to change the color of this to black so that it separates itself from, from the sort of leaf shape. I'm going to zoom way in here. And this is where smart guides actually will come in handy. So if you go to, to the view tab or view drop down, uh, and turn smart guides on. Sometimes they can be annoying, but I actually find them way more useful than not. It's Command U on a on a Mac and Control U on a PC, or you can just go to View and make sure that's check marked. So when I click on this circle and start to bring it towards the center of uh, my petal shape and then up towards the bottom of it, all these pink lines in here are aligning and snapping uh, my shapes together. And so now I know it's dead center and right at the bottom of it. And I'm going to just select all of that artwork and group it together by right clicking and clicking on group in the drop down. You can also use Command G or Control G on a Mac. Or I'm sorry, Control G on a PC. And then let's zoom in here. Now, what we're going to do, since we have this grouped, and it's actually very important that you have it grouped or else your effect is going to be applied to each of these individually, which is not what we want. We actually want it to be applied to the whole group. We're going to go to Effect, Distort and Transform, Transform. And this is the awesome Transform Effect panel. This is where all the magic happens. First thing I want you to do is sort of ignore everything. And if you've used this before and you have all the uh, you know, different default percentages and things in here, just zero everything out. You know, Go 100% on this scale. Make sure that the move is set to zero because we're not even going to use that at all. Angle might be at zero. This one doesn't matter if it's already at an angle. Um, one thing you want to do here is in the reference, click on the bottom center checkbox here and make sure that's selected. That's going to rotate around the very bottom center of our shape, and that's, that is what we want it to do. Now what we're going to do is uh, select the number of copies we want. In this case, we want, so we're going to have a shape every 45 degrees, which will lead to eight shapes around the circle. So I have my original and I'm going to need seven copies. So it's going to be the original plus seven copies. And I'm going to make that 45 degrees. And I'm going to go ahead and select the preview and you'll be able to see <laughs> this entire uh, sort of flower shape that it creates. And I'm going to hit OK on that, allow it to sort of start that transformation. Now if I click off of this, notice how I, I can't click on any of these shapes that it created. The only one I can click on is, is this shape here, which is actually the group that we had earlier. And this is where it's important. The reason that I had it uh, set as a group and the reason why I think this is the best way to duplicate shapes around uh, any sort of circular uh, angle is because I can double click on this group. I can select each of these shapes individually. If I select this top shape and nudge it upward with the arrow keys. Look at how every single one, I'm gonna go ahead and use shift so you can see this. So shift and use the arrow keys. It transforms everything outward from the center at the exact same time. That is something that you aren't able to adjust or move in any of the other ways that you duplicate shapes around. So you can actually create the effect that you want before applying it. So what I'm going to do, because I can't tell how these overlap, is I'm going to change this. Go over to Transparency Panel. If you don't have that over here, go down Window, then Transparency. And I'm going to select in the blending mode here, Multiply. Now I'm starting to see this overlapping effect in all of my shapes. And what I can do is sort of just bump this down until I get the overlapping effect that I want. And that's pretty close to where Apple has all the shapes overlapping. So now what I can do is, since this is not committed yet, I'll double click out of it, click on it again, and I'm going to go to Object, Expand Appearance. And once I do that, now I have this group of objects that are all duplicated around the shape. I'm gonna go ahead and ungroup that by right clicking and selecting ungroup 
And what that leaves me with is a bunch of these uh, grouped together little tiny circles and then big leaf shapes. So I'm going to undo that and I'm going to select all of these one more time and go ahead and right click on it and ungroup again. Now I have all of these out as individual pieces and I can zoom in. Uh, that's command plus and minus to zoom in and out. I'm gonna go back to my selection tool though because I just want to select all these circles that we had. These were just uh, to be used for spacing. I'm gonna hit the delete button to get rid of those. So now we can zoom back out. And all we need to do from here is actually click on each one of these and select the swatch color that we want to assign to it. I'm actually not sure of the order, so I'm gonna to have to refer back to this one. It looks like I missed that, so the orange should be the first, and then red, purple. So we'll select this one and make sure that that is the orange color. I believe this should be the red. And then we have the purple color. These are all out of order a little bit, so I may need to refer back. So we got the darker purple blue, dark green, lighter green. Okay, so this should be this lighter pink. Then we go with the darker purple. And then we'll select the blue color, the darker green, the sort of in between green and yellow green, and then we'll select the yellow color. Okay, so we are very, very close. What we can do is grab all of these, group them together with Command G or uh, right click and then select group. Uh, and we're gonna bring this over to the app icon and what I'm going to do is actually select, now that I have that grouped, I'm going to select everything, the group and the app icon. And then I'm going to click on the app icon. You'll see the, uh, the darker blue line around it. That means we're going to align it to a key object. So what that means is that we set the app icon as the key object and anything else we have selected is going to align to it based on what we select up here. So I'm going to center it both horizontally and vertically again, and I'm going to click off select that group and we're just going to scale that down holding shift and option drag from the corner until it's about the size of what the app icon is so this is very very close i'm going to show you one more thing to really make it look like the app icon that's because the solo multiply effect isn't quite as dark in these sort of interior petals it doesn't make it as dark as apple had it so i'm going to show you a little trick to darken up just these petals I'm going to create a uh, hold option and duplicate this out to create another version of this. And then I'm going to click on this group, come over here, and we're going to select the Shape Builder tool. And what I can do with this tool, you'll notice how it, uh, it can sort of see all the over overlapping shapes. And it knows, hey, when you're hovering over this, I see that shape that it's creating. So what we can do is actually hold option and just get rid of all of these extra shapes. Now we don't have to click on each one. We can actually hold option, click and drag, and we can draw through each of the shapes that we don't want. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, draw through each of these and let go. And then I'm going to zoom in a little bit. We've got a little bit left over inside here. I'm going to do the same thing. Just click drag and draw through each of these uh, triangles here, let go. And now we have the interior leaf shapes. What I'm going to do with this is just simply, uh, I think, I don't think it's grouped together. Okay, we're still grouped together. That's good. So I'm going to click on this, hold shift, and click on the uh, full group over here, and then let go of shift and re click on that group. And now we're going to align to the key object again. And because this is set as the key object, this will align to that. So we're going to center it up. And there you go, we've darkened those up. And I think that they have actually gotten a little bit too dark. So let's drop this opacity up here to 25%. Hit enter to commit that. And there we go. We'll add one last finishing touch here. I'm gonna select everything, group it all. And then I'm gonna select, uh, well, it already has a line to artboard selected. So we're gonna center it completely on the artboard. And then I'm gonna use uh, command option two. That's Control Alt 2 on a PC to unlock all my uh, any objects that were locked. I'm gonna click on this background layer and let's switch it to something darker. Um, how about something along the lines of I'm just gonna select like zero on this guy and we'll do maybe 88% black. So I'm gonna set that B to 
12 and then hit enter and we have that black so now this icon really pops off of that that background shape okay so that's how to create the ios photos app icon i hope this tutorial helped you if you have any questions or suggestions post them in the comments below and we'll be sure to follow up you can also find me on youtube and social media at pixel and bracket thanks for watching take care and i'll see you next time